I think this term has come up a couple of times since we've been talking and I know I bring it up quite a bit in other shows and I, and I did notice that somebody left in one of my YouTube comments the other day, like, what does mainstream mean? And I was like, you know what? We often don't really describe what that means. So Justine, what is your definition of mainstream? I think mainstream is um, accessible and free porn. Um, I'm thinking of it in those simplified terms because of the fact that I work with young people who um, are legally not able to access um, that they, you know, can pay for to actually support a workers income 401k health insurance but they're googling something quickly and whatever shows up being mainstream because it's easily accessible mm -hmm. so what would be the difference between say that and like a more carefully curated ethical um so when i talk about mainstream which is majority of you know the the context in which we're working in when we're being literate we are talking a lot about sex workers' rights. I think when we don't make the distinction between mainstream porn and ethical porn, we are leaving out the level of marginalization that so many sex workers experience. Because as you had mentioned earlier, pornography is so diverse. There are so many different types of, you know, porn that's out there, just like there is different genres of um, Hollywood films you might see. There are not only just different genres within porn, but also the different ways that it's produced. Um, and in some ways it's done ethically, in other ways it's um, marginalizing and harming people behind that screen, taking advantage of the people's vulnerabilities behind that screen. And in a way it becomes this um, you know, critical race theory approach or a history kind of class approach when we're talking about the, you know, the, the politics around pornography and that industry. And that's not normally what, you know, they're wanting to jack off to when they are in eighth grade, you know, and talking about, you know, what they've seen recently. But that's what I want them to think about, because that's a part of the literacy component that um, amplifies privilege and doesn't regard the oppression that is on the other end of that. They're so used to free music, streaming everything for free. And, you know, I want them to be able to have that same, um, you know, critical thinking skills around something they might have dopamine hits off of from something like pornography because sex workers are not protected and they're not regarded as, you know, equal citizens. Um, and that is a huge problem when the industry is as prof pro profitable and large as it is. So how is it that we have so many unprotected people that are in this industry, given how um, big of it it actually is? So would you say that like ethical porn then would just be, you know, produced by specific studios who kind of make sure that they pay the performers well, that they um, are producing these scenes under safe circumstances where they can set boundaries, where they have autonomy over their body, um, where they maybe have a say in how they're portrayed? I mean, it, it's, it has been changing, but, you know, we, we do see a lot of with these kinds of, um, you know, tropes and, um, you know, racial stereotypes, stuff like that. I mean, I, I definitely have talked to performers who have come to set and, you know, read the script, didn't get the script before set, so never had a chance to really vet what they were doing and then read the script and really didn't like the way that it portrayed them and, and walked off. Mm hmm I'm glad you bring that up, Holly. I, one of the things that I teach in my classes with my seniors and my juniors um, is, you know, mainstream titles and how racialized they are and the implications behind that. Um, you know, our, one of the titles of a, a talk I give is called, Are You a Genre or Are You Privileged? Because white is often not a genre in mainstream, but mm -hmm. Japanese is, hentai, Filipino, BBC, Ebony, Indian, Chinese, Korean. Um, and what does that say then? That implies that me and other BIPOC, you know, people are a fetish, are exotified, are othered, and we're not the template or standard or status quo of beauty because we aren't a part of white culture. And, you know, what are the implications of that and how might that actually amplify racism when you also have literal dopamine hits that are occurring as you are 
pleasuring yourself to racialized tropes. And so that's like this whole extra layer that they're often not thinking of. Um, and I want them to, because that's a part of literacy. So I think it's important that, you know, we're talking about these titles um, and how in a lot of ways, ethical porn takes into account just pleasure, but not needing to lean on racism in order to garner that pleasure in a user. Hey guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q&As, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.